The No Man's Sky hype is getting pretty crazy lately because the next update actually made it a really solid title, one that I'm personally playing. So today, we're gonna benchmark the new update with some budget graphics cards. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be benchmarking the new No Man's Sky Next update with some budget graphics cards. And if you're new here and wanna see more benchmarking or PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's start benchmarking. Before getting into the actual benchmarks though, let's do a quick intro of what cards we're using today and tour the testing rig. I promise this part of the video will be super quick. Today we'll be using a GT 1032 gigabyte, R7 362 gigabyte, GTX 660 Ti 2GB, GTX 750 Ti 2GB, RX 460 4GB, and finally a GTX 1050 Ti 4GB. Now I know I only have 6 graphics cards here, I obviously can't benchmark all of them, but I feel like this is a pretty good mix up of used graphics cards here in 2018. If you don't have one of these exact graphics cards, it will be pretty easy to figure out which one of these graphics cards yours is closest to, that way you can at least ballpark what kind of performance you'll get. For our testing platform today, as per very popular request, I'm going to use this Dell Optiplex that I featured in three separate videos now. Be sure to check out those budget build guides if you're interested in that. My normal testing platform is a Ryzen 2600X based PC, but since so many of you want me to gear these videos towards budget hardware, we're going to go with that today. This Dell Optiplex is rocking an i5-3470 clocked at 3.2GHz, 8GB of DDR3 RAM, and I have No Man's Sky installed on a Kingston 120GB SSD to make this process a bit easier for me. To kick off these benchmarks, I first want to include a chart that shows all of these graphics cards running with the same exact settings and resolution. I'm going to show you what settings I would use for all of these cards individually in just a second, but a lot of you always want to know how the cards compare to each other with the same settings, so here is that. And finally, before getting into the actual benchmarks, keep in mind that I kept most of these graphics cards at 720p in low settings. You can always tweak the individual settings up or down because some of the settings affect performance more than others, but for the purpose of this video, I kept all the settings consistent. Also, take a look at how poorly the AMD cards are running in this graph. After seeing these results for myself, I had to compare them to others online, and it seems like a ton of AMD owners are having some serious issues running this game. And without further ado, the first card we have in our benchmarking lineup is the GT1030, which is a very popular card for you budget builders out there who only buy new hardware. For this card, I kept the settings at 720p and low, and here we averaged 33 FPS just like you saw in the comparison chart. The next card up was the GTX 660 Ti, which I actually haven't made a dedicated video on yet, stay tuned for that, but here I actually bumped up the settings to 720p and medium and got a very solid 46 FPS. As you can see from the footage here, keep in mind that even though it's only 46, the game actually ran very smoothly and that's actually true for all Nvidia cards we're benchmarking today. Moving on we have the GTX 750 Ti, this one I have made an entire dedicated video for recently, and here I moved the settings back to 720p and low and got an average FPS of 46. Once again, still very smooth despite despite being under that 60 FPS mark. For our last Nvidia card, here we have the GTX 1050 Ti. Some of you might not even consider this a budget card to be honest, but here we could actually get into the 1080p resolution for once, and still with low settings it averaged 45 FPS. Moving on to the AMD cards, remember I said these were running very poorly compared to the Nvidia ones, and as you can see here, the R7 360 could only crank out a 32 FPS average in 720p in low settings. Also take a look at how low those 0.1 and 1% lows are, it was stuttering like crazy. And finally, the last card we have was also a stuttering mess, the RX 460. With the settings still in 720p and low, I only managed to get an FPS average of 36. I think you can tell from these results that if you're thinking about picking this game up and you have a budget AMD graphics card, until this game gets updated even more, you probably won't have a great playing experience. So those are the results. As you can see, the No Man's Sky Next update is still a very poorly optimized game, which is a huge bummer. I was actually having a a ton of fun the last few days playing this game with my GTX 1080 Ti system back there, but the fact that I now know that this game is running very poorly on budget hardware kind of has me bummed out a bit. As always, make sure you guys drop a comment down below with what system you're running No Man's Sky on and what kind of
kind of results you're getting, that way other users that might have a similar system as you can see them as well. Well that wraps up my No Man's Sky benchmarking video with some budget graphics cards. If there's a graphics card that you want to see added or dropped from my list, make sure you let me know down below. Well I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel, and as always, thank you for watching. And please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos. Thank you.